Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Anthony Kelly. Today, I want to talk to you about the topic of demonic activity. Now, this is setting you up for the Halloween week. We are getting ready to celebrate Halloween, where kids will be out trick-or-treating, and there'll be trick-or-treats out there, especially in the military community and other communities, and the kids will be dressing up in costume and parading around getting their candy. But that brings up an interesting topic today that I really want to talk to you about from a therapeutic standpoint and a theological standpoint. And that is, are demons real? Now, I just did a chap preached a chapel service where I talked about this very topic in Mark chapter 5 and 1 through 21, where Jesus encounters a demonized man. This demoniac man had over 5 thousand demons. He said his name are, we are legion. We are many, meaning there could be up to 5,000 demons in this guy. He was bound up. He was tormented. He was tortured. He's in mental anguish. Now, mental illness is real. The DSM, the Diagnostic Manual for all therapists and mental health professionals will label out different diagnoses for mental health and illness. And in those diagnoses, it talks about the criteria for what is labeled for each thing, for such as borderline personality disorder or bipolar disorder or even DID, dissociative identity disorder. Now, I've encountered in helping a lot of girls out of satanic ritual abuse victimhood, uh, and I've helped a lot of people who, girls, especially women, who are were bound up by demons. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But also, they had multiple personality disorder. That was the old diagnostic label. Now it's dissociative identity disorder. Now, that is a completely different topic than that of demons. But those who are bound up in satanic ritual occults, often, not only did they manifest dissociative identity disorder, but they also had demonic activity within them. And that demonic activity bound them and it tormented them. Just like this demoniac was bound and tormented. He would cut himself. He would scream in the middle of the night. He would lament and wail and scream to the point where the people of the town got used to it. They were so used to the smell of stinging pigs, the pink herders in the distance, and the scream of this man at night. That when Jesus came and healed a man, drove out the demons and the herd of pigs, and the pigs all died in the like Sea of Galilee, and they all drowned, and the demons went off to wherever they went, presumably to the pit. Who knows? The scripture doesn't tell us. But that freaked the townspeople out in Mark chapter 5. They asked Jesus to leave, especially when they saw this man, who they are used to seeing, screaming and hollering, crying out. In the middle of the night, he was clothed, sitting in Jesus' feet, in his right mind, meaning his mental state was returned back to him. His sanity was returned back to him. Jesus healed this man. Now, the Bible is clear. Demons are real. Not just in biblical times, but they are real today. I have encountered that. I'm seeing shadows move across during deliverances, seeing shadows move across the room. I've seen stuff thrown across the room. I've seen people who I'm praying over have supernatural power to try to hurt and harm me. But when I called upon the name of Jesus, I called upon his angels for help. They did indeed help. And they were able to drag off those demons to the pits. I'm here to tell you today, the demonic activity is real as a pastor first and then an army chaplain and a theologian and as a therapist with the state of Texas. I'm here to tell you that demonic activity is real. It's been real in a lot of my clients. It's real in a lot of people I've countered in the army and it's real in a lot of people I've countered in the pastorate as well. Demonic activity is real. The problem is a lot of churches, a lot of Christians don't realize how much influence that Satan has over them. If you even read C.S. Lewis' Screwtape Letters, you will see from a demonic standpoint of how they view humanity and how that is so skewed in our minds today. 
it does not surprise me. And I forgive me for being a little hoarse today. I've been a horse all week, struggling with some kind of bug, whatever it is. But I'm here to tell you today that no matter what the bug, no matter what the illness, Jesus heals. He's the author and perfecter of my faith. He's the great physician. He's the Lord God who heals. He's Jehovah Rapha. Lord Jesus Christ and his name and power drove out those demons and can drive out the demons in your life today. You may be bound up with sin and addiction of alcohol and drugs and pornography and sin of all sorts. It doesn't surprise me what the world does. They're bound up. They're lost. Unfortunately, they're lost. And it's a sad reality. They're lost and they're going to hell. Nothing surprises me what the evil has done like in Pete Diddy's house. Nothing surprises me with him in all these Hollywood elites because they're bound up with sin. They're bound up with evil. They're bound up with demons. But you, if you're watching this and you're a child of God, you have the choice to choose to be away from sin. Because the moment you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, you are set free from your sin. You are washed and sanctified by his blood. You no longer have to be in sin. It's because you choose to be in sin. You choose to look at pornography. You choose to look at crap on the internet. You choose to curse. You choose to sleep around. You choose to do all the stuff that the world does. You choose it. But you don't have to. You are set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. This man, this demoniac in Mark chapter 5 found out that Jesus is Lord of all. Even the demons acknowledged that fact. They said, Lord, don't torture us. Lord Jesus, Son of the Most High God, don't torture us. Send us to the heart of pigs, that would be better. And Jesus did that very thing. For whatever reason, he granted them mercy. He could have tormented them. He could have sent them straight to the pits of hell and let them burn in the fire. But he let them go to the herd of pigs. We serve a merciful, loving God. No matter how much evil you have committed, no matter how much sin you have done, Jesus loves you so much. He loves you so much. He has set you free by his your sins, by his blood. He has set you free. Now, we war in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We war against the things of this, not of this world. We fight against not the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Evil that lurks in the darkness. Evil that lurks in the shadows. It's like Frodo in the Lord of the Rings. And he goes through the valleys and he encounters all the different things that trials and tribulations and sufferings that he goes through, carrying that ring of power to the Mount of Doom. In the end, he struggled with throwing it into the fire. But it was Gollum and his greed that grabbed the ring, his precious, and died with it. You, the hero of the story, Have a journey through pain, sickness, death, suffering. It sucks. I'm sorry you're going through it. It's because of the state of this fallen world. But we do have a promise. A promise of eternal glory forever and ever and ever with Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. If you accept Jesus Christ in your heart today, if you repent of your sins, acknowledge him before all, confessing of those sins, Get water baptized, as it says in Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, for the remission of your sins and your for, and the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Finalize that decision with water baptism. You come up out of those waters fresh and clean, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus sets you free today. How many of you are going to choose freedom versus bondage? You want to be bound up by demons? Go right ahead. It's your choice. You want to be set free by the blood of Jesus Christ? To live in freedom? No longer have to be bound by pornography? No longer have to be bound by alcoholism? No longer have to be bound by drugs and drugs and all sorts? 
bound by marijuana. Some of you are so bound by smoking marijuana or taking your gummies that demons have control over your soul. I'm here to tell you today, emphatically, powerfully, Jesus wants to set you free from all your addictions. Choose Jesus here today. Amen? Choose Jesus. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. You can call me crazy. You can call me nuts. But one thing you cannot call me is someone who rejects Jesus. Because I love my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to follow him to the end of my days. And that's what the demoniac man, demonized man, found out when he was sitting at Jesus' feet in his right mind. He said, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to follow you for the rest of my days. I want to follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, no, don't follow me. You go and tell your family, your friends, your loved ones, that all that I've done here for you today. But he did not really obey Jesus. He did that. But he went to the Decapolis, which is a 10-city region of the entire area, telling all what Jesus had done for him. And people were amazed. I can imagine there were tours, ghost tours set up. You know, just like you go to these Charleston and all these other cities, how there's ghost tours. And, and you take you on a tour of the haunted places. And I'm sure that he, this guy was in that location where people did ghost tours. And he said, there, it's, there's that demoniac guy. There's that guy with all the demons. And Jesus set him free. So he can go to the 10 city region, destroy that ghost tour business and say, hey, this is what Jesus done for me. And the Bible says all who heard were amazed. They were amazed at what Jesus had done. And they're going amazed at what Jesus done in your life today. So my message for you today, yes, demonic power is real. Demons are real. But nothing is the match for the faithful man, woman, or child who gets on their hands and knees and prays the Lord Jesus Christ for deliverance, for the deliverance of themselves and for others. You are no match. Demons are no match for you. Demons and all have the strongest and principalities, rulers, and authorities and demonic powers are no match for you as you get on your hands and knees and pray to the Lord Jesus Christ for his blessing grace and mercy upon your life and others. May God bless you and richly touch your life in a powerful way this season. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Let it go beyond, above and beyond where it's at right now. And if you want to know further about another horror story I had when I was doing a counseling session with a young couple and how it turned out demonic powers manifested, I encourage you to watch this link next to me right now. Just click it and find out more. In Jesus' name, may you be blessed. God's grace and mercy be upon you. Amen.